Oh, yeah, that's right. Turok 2 Remastered is finally here. What is up, dudes and dudes in the internet? My name is Seth, and we are back again at this game. I've already covered this game two times on the channel. This is my childhood right here, and I am so, so happy that Night Dive Studio ended up getting the rights to the Turok series, even though I ended up actually doing the Turok 1 Remastered series as well, and that's absolutely beautiful. You know, if you're a fan of Turok 1, go for it. Turok 2 was it for me. You know, this is the game that I grew up with. Now, just going into it, I just want to let you know that uh, the same cheat code, the same big cheat, beware, and you can use the keyboard as well, beware Oblivion is at hand, does still activate the big cheat, uh, so if anybody's just tuning in and you just got this game and you want to mess around with all this fun, goofy stuff, teleport to levels and everything like that, you can, uh, but they've also got some nice new graphical settings and stuff like that. I turned the motion blur all the way down because personally speaking, I was having a very, very difficult time uh, dealing with the motion blur. Multiplayer, uh, you know, for the most part, you can play it on Steam with your friends, but they didn't seem to include the black cartridge co-op mode. I'll talk more about that as soon as we end up getting into the game. Let's just go to normal and jump right to it. Oh, this game looks so good right now, dude. Look at that nice dynamic lighting and shadows that they ended up adding. It looks so beautiful, dude. I am so pumped about this. Now, if you're wondering also why the episode is going to be so long, I'm going to kind of do one level equals an episode, because honestly speaking, I don't really have the time to squeeze in uh, another Let's Play series where I'm going to have 10-minute episodes going on and on and on. Greetings, Turok. I am Aiden. Yes, you certainly are! The elders of the Lost Land, known as the Lazarus Concordance, have charged me with the task of guiding you on your quest to stop the Primogen. The Primogen seeks to destroy the five energy totems that keep him imprisoned within the wreckage of his light chain. Yes! If he succeeds in destroying all five energy totems, he will be free, and the blast wave of temporal energy unleashed will destroy your universe. You must stop the Primogen to work. Protect the energy totems at all costs. You will also be given additional mission objectives as you venture deeper into each of the worlds that you must explore. The port of Adia. It's still so hard to hear her over the music. <laughs> this once peaceful coastal village has been utterly destroyed by the dinosaur army. Good. Under the Primogen's command. Good. Oh, it's beautiful. Look, it's like fireworks. An explosive the entrance. City, the battle wages on as stragglers are hunted down and The dinosaurs are genetically engineered dinosaur hybrids. They are utterly evil and very dangerous. Though they do the Primogen's bidding, the dinosaurs have a more sinister and personal agenda of their own. To see humankind wiped from the face of him. Oh the yeah. Mission objectives are as follows. Activate three distress beacons. Got it! Rescue four children. Mm-hmm. Check two. Activate the warp portals. Check three, kind of. Locate the energy totem. And, and pretend it, it defend it, not protect it at all costs. Oh yeah, awesome! So I do gotta say that so much has actually changed with this game. You can see the new objective markers and stuff like that. I'm gonna be uh, commentating and talking a lot about uh, the differences between this version and the old N64 version, which is what I grew up with. And I also ended up actually doing a series on the PC version. I am absolutely obsessed with this game. Like seriously, uh, I've listened to heavy metal versions of the same rock and tunes that are in this game uh, and just played through it like over and over and over again. So I'm really, really excited to be able to present this to you today, folks. And extremely excited, again, that Night Dive ended up getting the rights to this game. Now, I'm going to talk a little bit more in detail as to what ended up actually happening with the Turok franchise, why it actually ended up disappearing from existence for like a million zillion years. Uh, and then also the biggest thing, too, is why exactly... Wait, did I end up grabbing the objective thing with Bobby yeah, I did uh, but you can see they've got new uh, markers on the HUD that actually show you things uh, points of interest nearby they also have those show up for uh, keys explosives and stuff like that so you don't end up getting completely destroyed and wrecked and confused by the game's systems because this game is very very old and with it the game is very very confusing for most new players now another thing too that I think is a very interesting change that they ended up doing at least over the n64 version I don't know about the 
the PC version. That's not really the one that I grew up with, right? But auto aim is pretty much off. So the, the bullets are like, so precise, dude. You gotta have skill to play this game. And that's what I actually love about it, is they've managed to turn this game into a very, very Twitch experience. So it's like, you know, speedrunners can have an absolute blast with it. You know, uh, revisiting it and just even even going through the water, I'm double tapping uh, forward to actually swim faster. Enemy about to drop in three, two, one. Here we go, die. That guy always ends up dying with one hit, I'm not exactly sure why. But, so, what ended up happening with Night Dive Studios and with Turok as a franchise as a whole is, uh, Iguana Studios, or, uh, was it Activision or whatever? I'm not exactly sure on the company name exactly and all that hubbub, sorry to say. But, uh, these games were very ambitious for the time. Turok 2 in particular ended up doing a lot of things uh, that weren't heard of in the time of like all the N64 and stuff. Even the flamethrower weapon, which we'll end up getting later in the series, actually had like procedural fire, uh, which was one of the first of its kind. That was the absolute first flamethrower that ended up ended uh, doing something like that. While a lot of the game itself, you know, the graphics and everything like that, it was just a huge step up. Wait a minute, where is this idiot? There you go. That's who I wanted to kill. Huge step up from, like, everything else that was coming out at the time. And it also ended up selling uh, a lot of the N64 uh, expansion pack. I think that's what that thing was called. You know, the visual enhancement pack that you had to plug into the N64. Uh, I'm pretty sure this was actually one of the first games that required it. Uh, I don't think that the game ended up running without it. And it was, it was money well spent because this game was absolutely amazing and still is. Now... What ended up happening beyond that point is that, uh, well, the, the company kind of started to see a decline in, uh, you know, uh, as far as, like, their finances were concerned, right? Like, they started losing money, unfortunately, and uh, as they ended up developing Turok 2, uh, or Turok 2, Turok 3, I mean, uh, they started to try and do, like, cutscenes and stuff like that with characters having full lip, uh, lip sync and lip motion and stuff like that, and that was also another thing that was very, very, uh, futuristic, dare I say, for the times, and, uh, because of it, oh, you little stupid freaks, get out of here! These guys are, like, so annoying, dude. They're they're even more annoying than they used to be because they're so difficult to kill. Even, especially when we attack them with the claws, you know what? No dinosaur left unturned except for you. You're the only one that I'll leave behind. Don't worry, our screen's flickering because our flashlight is turning off. Uh, so what, anyways, what ended up happening beyond that point... Get out of here, you! I don't have any more pistol ammo, so I gotta get all up in your face. That enemy is following us to the ends of the earth. Jiminy Crockett is, they pretty much ended up going bankrupt, uh, you know, long story short, which was very disappointing, uh, you know, uh, around the time that I, they had Turok Evolution coming out for the GameCube, that is where the game, uh, where the company itself was just rushing the game out, you know, they, they were kind of on a deadline, and honestly speaking, they, you know, they didn't really deliver well, you, some people, I'm sure, Turok Evolution was their favorite game of all time, personally speaking, Turok ended up going downhill since Turok 2. Uh, that's just kind of my own experiences with it, and uh, most of all, I ended up figuring out afterwards that little uh, way that we pull our character up onto the ledge is a new feature that they ended up adding, by the way. Makes some platforming elements a lot easier, for sure. But, uh, yeah, need needless to say, folks, that uh, they ended up going bankrupt, and it was very, very disappointing, very disheartening, because then we ended up having the uh, Turok uh, game end up coming back. Where is it? Ah, there we go. We ended up having Turok come back eventually on, was it the Xbox or was it the 360? I, I don't know. They ended up coming back with the new Turok, which was okay. It wasn't really that bad, but it wasn't like this. You know, that was the whole thing is it wasn't like this game that I grew up with. This game that is extremely brutal, uh, you know, uh, very violent and very just arcadey twitch, go, 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 rush into the game, doesn't hold your hand type of experience, you know, because then they ended up, whoopsie daisy, we're not supposed to do that just yet. There's no fall damage either, which is beautiful. Uh, but they, 
you know, then then the uh, 360 or Xbox version of the game ended up coming out, and needless to say, it uh, it was pretty much all about the knife and quick kills and stuff like that. It wasn't really like this with the cerebral bore and all of these fan favorite weapons and stuff like that. Those were all just taken out of the game and taken out of the franchise. And then eventually, Disney ended up getting their hands on the Turok franchise, and I guess they were trying to hold on to it until dinosaurs became popular, uh, that they could do a movie or something like that. Maybe, uh, you know, it was kind of talked about where they potentially could have ended up doing a Turok movie and started doing a new Turok game and stuff like that. But unfortunately, it meant that we were not going to end up seeing Turok anymore for the rest of our lives, right? Thankfully, uh, you know, I was so happy about this when I heard that Night Dive Studios got their hands on this game because I've actually played a lot of their games in the past. Uh, I've done a video of Strife, which was one of the early bird games that they ended up uh, uh, kind of converting over to this newer modern approach where they end up adding, you know, a couple, a couple little things they end up adding to it, which are very, very nice, but they do retro games a solid by uh, making it, you know, very true to the original core gameplay, uh, very true to the fans, you know, they, they want to make this game, uh, f you know, they make any of the retro games that they've ever covered, uh, like, for old school players and stuff like that. They ended up actually recently releasing, oh man, the normal bow sucks, dude! Give me the tech bow! Uh, they ended up releasing, the, they have the System Shock IP, so they actually just released a uh, more modern version of it, which is very, very cool. I never really grew up with the System Shock games, so I don't really care. Uh, but I was so happy that they ended up getting the Turok franchise. I know I just keep saying that, but really I am, because uh, when they ended up announcing that they were going to end up doing Turok 1. I was so happy about it because it meant that they were going to end up doing Turok 2. And now here it is. We're finally playing it. I've been waiting for this game for like two or three years since they actually announced it seriously. And I am having an absolute blast with it. I played through the first level off camera just so that I could kind of acquaint myself with the controls. Whoops and daisy, never shoot him. Shoot the explosive barrel. Oh, that's right. Sometimes he survives it, that freak. Uh, but... Yeah, I, I'm just so happy about it, everybody, like seriously. So, these are going to be our portals. These were normally the save stations of the game. You can help me very, very much. So she actually has a limited one-time use per each level. She's going to end up giving us ammo, uh, restocking all of our ammo, and giving us health. Now, we technically don't need to end up using this, but on this level, honestly speaking, why wouldn't we end up using the ammo, you know, so that we can end up using our shotgun and stuff? Then you could quick warp from the other levels, because that's kind of the thing, is later in the game, we end up revisiting all of the levels uh, to collect keys to open the last boss zone, right? And and, uh, the one thing that's disappointing, which I'm happy that they ended up keeping, is the fact that when you end up leaving into, uh, one of those areas, uh, it actually has all of the enemies respawn, so, rip, it means that we have to, like, kill all of these enemies again. Not every single enemy ends up respawning, just a lot of them, those raptor attack, raptor attack, get out of here, you jerk face! Oh yeah, that's right, we have our shotgun, I should be using this. Get wrecked, you beautiful monster. They ended up adding a lot more blood to the game as well, which uh, old school Turok fans may or may not recognize. Die. Uh, but the other thing that I wanted to make a point of, I hope I made my point clear with the Night Dive Studio stuff. Oh no, that's right. There was one last thing I was going to mention is the fact that uh, they have actually confirmed that because they now own the Turok franchise, they've remastered Turok 1, they've remastered Turok 2, and now their next plan for Turok anyways, whenever they end up getting around to it, is they're going to make their own new Turok game. And uh, if it's anything like what they've done with the System Shock game, I'm excited because they're going to make it very retro, very cool, uh, you know, again, have a lot of homages to the old Turok games, of course, uh, while also kind of putting a nice modern twist on it, is what they're gonna end up doing to it. Are you gonna freak out? Nah, you jerk face. Uh, where they're gonna make it all sparkly and clean, and it's just gonna be, it's gonna be beautiful, right? I gotta be very careful here, because I don't want to end up jumping down there, because we actually have to go over to this dude right here, instead of jumping down and ended up getting stuck. Let me swap back over to our shotgun. We do actually have some explosive shells, which is going to be great. Now, as far as that black cartridge thing that I was talking about, I was really, really, really fingers crossed hoping that they were going to end up actually doing that. 
Uh, because the black cartridge thing that they were going to do, let me see if I can actually pro skill no scope headshot these birds because we're actually, I'm not, I'm not a cruel freak. Uh, I'm not trying to kill them because I'm evil or anything like that. Oh no. Oh no, really? Oh really? There it is, okay, good. You actually have to kill all of those birds to end up going into a secret area so that we can end up getting an ultra health, which is going to be right in front of our face in two seconds right here, right? So anyways, what the black cartridge would end up doing, that was the black cartridge of the game that would work on the N64. It was an earlier cartridge, very similar to the gold cartridge on uh, Zelda Ocarina of Time, where it would end up having a couple specific differences uh, that didn't end up making it into the final product, one of which was one of the best glitches in any video game, I would argue, is because you could actually load the game up in multiplayer split screen, and then you could go into the cheats menu, warp to a single player level, and play through the game co-op with your friends. Now, there was a lot of glitches, you know, it wasn't, uh, obviously it wasn't optimized for it, so there wasn't, you know, it wouldn't work 110%. She's gonna talk here, so I'll explain it more in a minute. Oh, yeah. Beautiful. This is a talisman chamber. A holy she's, place that evil cannot enter. She's difficult to hear in this scene. Warp portals opens gateways to these ancient sanctuaries. Your quest will require you to locate five sacred talismans. The talismans will grant you immunity from certain types of danger and allow you access to new areas that must be explored. The spirits that watch over these chambers will require an offering of a mystical evil feather before a talisman can be secured. There are five talismans and five eagle feathers that must be found as your quest unfolds. So the eagle feathers are kind of a required... Actually, I wonder whether or not... Are they a required item for the Prime Engine keys or are they required... Oh yeah, they definitely are. That's right. I'm just remembering the one that's actually in this level. Okay, rip me. I thought it was actually to do with uh, the uh, nuke weapon, but nope. That's, uh, that's actually a completely separate thing. Double kill. So anyways, you can end up playing through the single player levels with a friend, but it didn't really work. You know, you would end up getting to these loading points or screens. Tagbo, get! You would end up going self-destruct. Yeah, it's beautiful. Oh man. Okay, let me see if I can do this. This is pretty much the sniper rifle of the game. Well, there is a sniper, like a legit one. Where's the other guy? Is he up there? No, he's up on that ledge right there. Uh, and then there's also another one. I know there is a couple up there, but I guess we can't actually hit them until we end up uh, coming up this ledge. But still. It was so awesome. I was really, really hoping that they were going to end up pushing uh, kind of like a co-op online through Steam uh, multiplayer, right? I, I was really, really hoping that they were going to end up doing that, but unfortunately they didn't. You know, I've kept up with all their tweets and everything like that, and they've said uh, they kind of hinted that they might have. This is where uh, we end up getting an eagle feather that gives us a jump ability, and that over there is one of the Primogen keys. So we end up coming back a little bit later in the game for all of those uh, because we need them to actually open the last uh, last boss's level, right? So that we can go and kick its butt. This game also ends up dealing with uh, extra life system. Uh, that's what these little things are as we're collecting them. They, that guy always ends up leaping in the wrong direction as his AI ends up getting activated before you actually come around the corner. He just leaps like a freak and then he's dead. I think there is actually... Is there a secret over that ledge? No, there isn't. That's the secret right there is we would jump into that building, but then we would have to backtrack a little bit so I'm not really going to bother with it, and here is another one of those save stations, but that's the other thing too, I completely forgot that I was going to say, so sorry about that, but you can actually manually save now, so that's actually fantastic. There is also a quick save that you can end up uh, assigning to a bunch of keys in the options. Um, very, very useful, very, very awesome that they ended up doing that nice modern touch to it, because otherwise this game was difficult, man, because of the fact that you had to do manual saves, right? And it just made it like so, uh, so crazy, especially in some of the later levels like Hive of the Mantis. Also, uh, the way that this game ends up working, just a pro tip for all you uh, players out there that may have just picked this game up, you can actually walk off a ledge and then jump 
I didn't time it properly, uh, but you can actually walk off the ledge and for a brief moment, you can actually jump uh, without having, it kind of gives you a little bit of a longer distance for jumping, right? Because there's some jumps in this game that are particularly difficult, I would argue, uh, you know, and that's the other thing too, is coming back to the game, not only did they give this game a couple bells and whistles as far as, you know, reflective water and the dynamic lighting and shadows for a little bit, and stuff like that. Uh, you can see they also ended up having these objective markers, which are very, very useful in some of the more cryptic levels. Uh, I'm really looking forward to seeing what they ended up doing with the Layer of the Blind ones, because they also have mentioned that they've redesigned some of the level layout to be a lot less cryptic uh, and a lot less like a labyrinth. Now, that especially would apply to the Layer of the Blind ones. Now, hang on a minute, because I gotta do something here. That's another thing that Turok almost did exclusively first compared to other games. Your arrows actually staying in their target. And I always did this as a kid. I always ended up filling up the target and thought it was so cool back in the day, man, that the arrows were actually sticking inside the opponents and stuff. The other thing too is because this is a retro, whoops, he did a nice little ballerina dance to uh, celebrate his death. But the other thing too that I think is absolutely awesome about this game that a lot of modern games don't have anymore unfortunately is that enemies can actually all fight each other all right sorry about that one folks uh there was a garbage truck going on in real life and i wanted to just uh get rid of it by just skipping the f uh, skipping into the footage right gave me a break to go and get myself a drink of water as well but man all live layers just so many things about this game that i absolutely love like like i said this really like legit this game is my childhood dude and, you know so much about it the lore is awesome the last boss, amazing. Probably one of my favorite last boss. Where you are? Where you, where you at? There you go. I just wanted you to peek your head out for two seconds there, dude. Whoopsie daisy, I didn't mean to use the tech arrow. Oh, well, well, anyways, we got some pistol ammo. Now, also, because this is a retro style game, you might be playing this game with a controller, which is fully functional. You can't end up doing that. However, one of the things that I would point out that you may end up noticing is What's going on? Why when I strafe around? Why does it feel so strange? That's because like most old retro games If we actually hold up and right at the same time, that is the fastest mode of transportation You might notice a lot of speedrunners will actually um Where is he? That guy always ends up dying You might notice a lot of speedrunners doing that technique where they kind of do that little side step uh, To try and get through the game as fast as possible, right? Whoopsie daisy uh, I keep on wanting to like destroy all of those boxes, but at the same time It's like I don't really you know I don't want to take the extra time to swap weapons and stuff, right? But you can see these objective markers are just fantastic. You know, the fact that they ended up adding all of these because otherwise, yeah, honestly speaking, this game ended up getting really, really confusing. Uh, you know, there was a couple times in the first levels and stuff like that. Honestly speaking, come to think of it, I don't even think, uh, playing this game in my childhood, you know, while I loved the game, I always just used the cheats, kind of skimmed around the level and stuff like that, and it's only when I ended up doing the first Let's Play I ever did on YouTube, uh, on the channel, which I've set to private now appropriately because it's so old and gross, but uh, in that series, that was actually the first time that I legit played all the way through Turok from start to finish, because uh, otherwise, I always found the levels to be way too confusing as a kid. Especially when you get to the layer of the blind one So I'm really excited to see what they ended up doing with that because ooh, that, that level is quite the mess if I do say so it's a cave level that's it well You'll see when we end up getting to it, right? But with the uh, objective markers that they ended up having, you can see, you know, we're going and, uh, uh, you know, going and activating all of these switches and stuff that otherwise might have actually been Whoops, I missed him that otherwise might have been difficult to actually get to, right? And one of the other things too that Turok 2 does that most modern games haven't even done for a very long time. There's very rarely a game that ends up doing it outside of maybe the Gears of War franchise where it's gruesome and all of the enemies actually have unique death animations uh, They have like a couple death animations each and then also a couple unique death animations Depending on the weapon that you end up using so we can actually get like uh, you know There's so many different animations where we can blow off all their arms their legs blow off their torso their heads Yeah, uh, their heads especially ends up becoming apparent when you end up using the cerebral bore fan favorite weapon uh, I don't want to necessarily spoil it if anybody is actually coming into this game right now and just thinks hey this game looks really really cool but rest assured the game and the guns and everything about it gets even more freaky and crazy later on 
which is why, like, whoopsie daisy, I already activated that, but I didn't kill that enemy. Maybe he just didn't end up spawning the first time. Okay, that was very strange. Or did I end up activating it through the wall, maybe? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. They, you know, I'm just going into this game like so quick and so fast that I, uh, you know, I might end up getting a little bit confused at some spots here, dudes and dudettes, but I, I'm just having an absolute blast playing this. We don't have any more explosive ammo because most of the weapons will actually have alternative types of ammo. So with the shotgun, you, you know, I'm, I know I'm doing a very poor job explaining it, but I'm just assuming that most people coming in uh, kind of already know all this stuff. Uh, but with the shotgun, for example, you see in the bottom left, that we've got the green shells which are just the normal shells and then there is also the red shells which we don't actually have right now whoopsie daisy i want to grab this and those are explosive shells those are the ones that we were shooting on those enemies that was just annihilating and destroying them in like one shot hello you stupid raptor attack raptor attack oh he's beautiful i love it the animations the ai was also another thing that was a huge step up from previous games uh like back in the day like seriously this game is old but it's beautiful i love it okay this is when we probably should have ended up getting the ammo supply uh from the save station right there okay now this is one part we gotta be very careful Careful at. I'm trying to be very, very cautious because if we fall, we die, and then that's it. We would have to end up respawning. So I'm also gonna do a nice little save function right here. While we're at it, I should also point out that you can go to the inventory at any time and see all of the keys uh, and special items that you've ended up actually collecting. This over here is going to end up being the keys to the Primogen level. Uh, this is going to end up being the reward for collecting the Eagle Feathers, right? And then finally at the end, that's going to be the Nuke Weapon, which is insanely powerful, insanely beautiful. I've heard that they've actually amped it up. No, get out of here, Flare Gun, you bother me. Uh, I've heard that they've amped it up and made it even more visually appealing and crazy. You know, I'm excited for it, but unfortunately, it's also one of those weapons that doesn't actually work on the last boss. Very similar to the uh, uh, nuke or the chrono scepter, I guess I should say, that they ended up having in Turok 1. There we go, it blew off its top half. The devs also ended up mentioning how they ended up adding some extra blood, so you can see that uh, if you're sitting there and being an old Turok fan and wondering, you know, what, what's going on? Why, I don't remember that much blood. I mean, I know there was blood in this game, but that much seriously yeah they they vamped that up as well but the dynamic lighting or whatever you want to call it the lighting that they've added to the game i just think is absolutely fantastic I love the subtlety that these guys do. You know, as a company, I'm really enjoying all of their products, you know? Uh, now, outside of System Shock, because like I said, you know, I didn't really grow up with that one, so I didn't really care so much. Whoopsie daisy, there we go. The aiming changes a little bit when you're actually ultra health, which boosts your health, gives you 200 extra health. Get out of here, you. Normal arrows, I don't think so. I can still get a headshot on you, you freak. What about your brother right here? Can I get a headshot? Can I get a headshot? Shoulder shot. Okay, whatever. I'll settle for it. Anyways, where is... Well, you know what? We should actually swap off of this weapon. Let's swap over to our pistol. All of the weapons also are going to end up having an upgraded version a little bit later on. Oh, excuse me again. I've actually got a pretty dry cough right now. And uh, I, I didn't know it was going to be affecting me this much. Now, the flare gun... I think it can actually cause damage. Honestly speaking, I've never ended up using it. Like, it's gross, right? It does emit light, so it's kind of supposed to be used for, like, the darker sections and stuff like that, for sure. But that's okay. Uh, you know, I just wanted to show you, uh, show you it for a minute there. And also, as I was mentioning about, like, upgraded weapons, I don't want to give too many spoilers to it because what this game is mostly about is, oh my goodness gracious, that's a weapon? Like, you know, the, the highlight of this game is definitely the weapons. Like, seriously, that is why you play this game, right? Okay, we've got some tech arrows as well, so let me just get that guy, and then also, whoop, got him! Get wrecked. I like how they're dying by one tech arrow as well. I don't know if that's what they used to die by, or maybe I just normally played this game on a harder difficulty. I don't know. Uh, but... The upgraded weapons kind of, what I mean by that is there's like a different shotgun that we can end up getting. It's called the Shredder, which, well, we'll get into that one later. That's actually one of my all-time favorite weapons in this entire game. Uh, there's also the Mag 360 or Mag 60, maybe. Maybe I always called it the Mag 60 as a pun. Uh, but that is like a machine gun pistol, kind of like Robocop's gun. And uh, it is absolutely powerful and beautiful. 
This is a very quick and easy way you can get rid of these little dinosaurs, by the way, is you just launch a nice little tech arrow down on them uh, because it ends up clearing them all up with the nice little explosive passive, right? That door is going to end up opening, but I don't care. Oh, wait, that doesn't open just yet. That's right, I'm getting ahead of myself here because self-destruct! <laughs> oh, he's beautiful. I love him. He's dead, though. Okay. You, get out of my way. Where's your little friend? There you go. Oh, that's just normal arrows. But you know what? We got the shotgun, so that's okay. I think that door ends up opening later. Maybe I'm mixing it up with another one. Honestly, who cares? Whatever. Let's just go through and blast every single one of these little freaks, seriously. Uh, now, the other thing, too, is the last boss, uh, just to kind of... I'm not going to do spoilers. Don't worry about it. But needless to say, he's a very, very awesome boss. Like, really. The, the whole point of the bad guy is he's trying to pretty much take over the entire universe, and you're the only character that actually stands in his way. A true hero in video games that's just saving the entire universe, you know? And um, if you didn't already know, fun fact is that Turok is actually a comic book franchise that uh, I guess a claim was just grabbing uh, randomly. I don't know, maybe they thought, hey, this is actually a pretty good idea. Let's try and, uh, you know, turn this into something, turn it into a full on franchise. And uh, unfortunately, it didn't seem to work for them which is very disappointing. Now, uh, one thing, too, that I will say is the positive that ended up coming out of it is that uh, many of the people that ended up working on these old games, I know I said that like a people, like the King's Speech for some reason, but uh, a lot of the... <clears throat> this ladder seems to be glitched. It did that the first time I ran through this level off camera as well. Uh, I'm not really going to be running through all of the levels off camera. I just, I couldn't help myself. I couldn't put this level, uh, put the game down as soon as I ended up loading up the first level, right? But... <gasps> Need to take a big deep breath here because it's a lot of words going a mile a minute. Um, what they ended up doing was they 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 moved on, and a lot of the original team that ended up working on Turok 2 and the Turok franchise ended up actually moving on to work on the Metroid Prime series that you may or may not have played on the GameCube, which makes sense, doesn't it? Because those games are very, very advanced and very ahead of their times. Because we're talking about an exclusive team of very, very... Uh, uh, you know, intuitive, uh, not intuitive, that's not the word that I'm looking for. Um, <clears throat> whatever, the word that I'm looking for is not here. Leave the, leave the word that I'm looking for in the comments below. <laughs> not really, but, uh... They, they, these were idea men and women that were uh, truly going to uh, revolutionize the gaming industry. And that's where it's so sad that they ended up going down, you know, because I, I to think what the Turok franchise, to think what gaming would be nowadays if these guys were still around. Now, you'll have to give me a minute here because I got to prepare for this because this is a very, very beautiful scene. Okay, this is where things amp up to crazy town. Not only is it very, very beautiful as far as the lore goes and these characters, but very difficult. Powers beyond the comprehension of flesh. The prime gem must not be stopped. The Tauntons must fall. Tauntons is our character's clan. The balance must falter. Chaos must commence. Oh. We are the darkness. We are the unseen. We are oblivion. That which has been set in motion cannot be stopped. Your deed. Your failure is inevitable. Oh, stop crying, guys. Time to get wrecked. No, but seriously, man. So cool, like I love the bad guys, and look how it's all like industry and destruction and futuristic technology. Oh look, are we gonna get the nuke right away? RIP! No we're not, you're gonna spawn right here. Hey, hey, hey! Stand still! Stand still! Stand still and take it, okay? I know that you're like a super enemy, but uh, you can just 
Stand, stand and take it. Oh, great. These guys. Okay. I mean, they're not as crazy as the other enemies that we can end up facing a little bit further on. But they're kind of like an upgrade to those dinosaurs. I'm surprised that we got through that scene as quickly as we did. Because honestly speaking, folks, normally that scene is very, very difficult. Now, I wanted to double check. Yeah, okay. I did hear that. Uh, I, I heard the ammo end up respawning. You can actually use certain locations like this as kind of an ammo station where you can restock on all of your supplies and ammunition. There's only a couple of spaces like that in the game, though. Cortana? Just kidding, this was way before Halo. And better. Turok. A strange presence fills this evil place. I do not understand its source, but it is somehow familiar to me. You must take care when entering the warp portals. Whatever this new threat is, it seems that false portals have been erected to lure you into a trap. See, now, the portal that we just entered, technically speaking, was supposed to have actually been... Beware Oblivion is in hand. Nice achievement. Uh, technically speaking, this is supposed to be the same type of portal that we entered that we were supposed to be using our sacred eagle feathers on, right? But, uh-oh, this is an evil version. Oh no, we gotta watch out for those things out in the world, right? Die, stupid. Okay, uh, where did it actually want us to go over here now, right? Yeah, I love that they have these objective markers. It makes things a whole lot easier. Uh, as far as just going through the levels, you could just, like, look at that! I could have missed that, like, so super duper easily, right? But, uh, okay, where, where, where's the spot that we're supposed to go right now? I always end up getting confused at this location. Oh, I see, so, technically speaking, oh boy, was that even what I was supposed to do? Let, hang on a minute. There we go. I was actually supposed to have just come out that doorway right down to here, but rip, I didn't. Instead, I ended up taking the long way around, because now as we end up coming to this part of the level, which is the end of the level, we can actually go into here and activate these switches now. Get out of my face, you stupid freak! Grab all of the ammunition. Get out of here, I said, dude. Seriously. And then, bada bing, bada boom, we missed a couple children. There we go. So you remember this area where we jumped onto that ladder and I was explaining about how you can walk off of an edge and then jump? Yeah, there was a kid down here. Whoopsie-daisy. Sorry about that one, folks. Uh, I guess I started... I, I've been rushing through this game a little bit too fast. I mean, I want to play this game very, very quickly. It, it's funny, too, because as I was playing this game off camera, I had no troubles whatsoever. I ended up finding all of the objectives like nothing. And I, I, I remember thinking to myself, wow, that was relatively easy and I didn't make a mistake like I usually do on these levels because like I said I would always just play these levels for fun as a kid so I'm not a hundred and ten percent familiar with all of the objectives and stuff like that right but uh, we just have two of the kids to actually do uh, to actually save right and it's it, you know it's relatively easy for the most part it's just that I wasn't looking for them so rip me for that one but uh, I, I do want to mention as well that, yeah, as you ended up seeing, if you don't end up completing the objectives, you do just get warped to the beginning of the level, which is not really that bad on this level, but more so at the later levels of the game. Yeah, see, rip me, because I did actually come over here uh, when we were in this location. Get out of here, you jerk face. But unfortunately, this is just so hidden behind here that I, I, I don't know, I guess I got distracted with whatever I was talking about and didn't end up actually going into here, right? So... Uh, as soon as we end up going into here uh, and just saving this other, the last child, then we just end up warping out of the level and then bada bing, bada boom, we're gonna be done with the first episode here. Which, uh, I was hoping I was gonna end up getting through this in record time a little bit faster while commentating, because uh, as I ended up playing this off camera, I got through it at maybe, maybe 39 minutes for the first level while I was still trying to learn uh, the controls and stuff like that, because the controls are tight, man. They're, they're very twitch. Uh, as I may or was I mentioning that earlier I think I was but uh, needless to say like I I don't remember this game not like without auto aim right so it's crazy to think now that the bullets are so precise and you actually have to aim at your targets and it's gonna be a little bit of a learning curve for me not that much of one though 
Now I want to mention as well, and just kind of show you this, that even though we're replaying through the level, it's not that big of a deal, because you actually get a lot of shortcuts that secretly end up opening as you're playing through the game, right? That's not something new to the game by any means, but it still just goes to show like how crazy uh, the design of this game was and how forward thinking it was as well. Now this is kind of the big objective uh, of most every level, is now suddenly we have to defend this totem from all these bad guys that are just gonna keep popping out but thankfully we have enough explosive ammo that I think we're gonna be able to get through this no problem both of those guys are gonna self-destruct sorry that we're not gonna show them on camera but bang there we go it's all done so that thing is going to have its own health bar as well as each other red bar was going down as we ended up defeating enemies and that ends up getting a little bit more difficult in some of the later levels for sure because the enemies in turn end up getting a lot more difficult now the reason that we can revisit this level obviously is because like i said earlier when we get an eagle feather uh, and a talisman we can end up revisiting the level to go and get that uh, primogen key right but you can see over here the objective markers kind of are all showing up everywhere and uh, these are all the key items that you actually need they're literally keys right so if we actually put down all these we ended up getting all three of the keys to level three that's going to be the death marshes but in the next episode we're gonna go over here to level two which is the layer of the blind ones one of my all-time favorite levels in any video game and then this is where you end up putting down the primogen keys uh, then there's also going to be I, I don't know based on the symbols but there's the layer of the blind ones which is a cave area, there's a hive of the mantids, and then there's the primogen's light ship, and then finally, last but not least, there's going to be the boss. But I hope that you all enjoyed today's episode. Like I said, I'm going to keep these episodes longer for the sake of, I've already covered this game on the channel multiple times before. This is a game true to my heart, and like I said, I don't really personally have the time to uh, stretch this out to being 10 epi uh, ten minute episodes and just kind of drag it out to being like every single day as a weekly uh, kind of thing, right? Now, that said, I'm going to try my best to have this series out to you every day because with the amount of levels that are in the game uh, it, we should be equaling about to seven episodes you know so that's gonna be a nice week of Turok a week of retro gaming right so hopefully I can do that if not sorry about that but otherwise I hope that you have enjoyed today's episode and thank you so much for watching very much appreciate it. don't forget to like share favorite and subscribe for more daily content sign or and stay epic everybody